In today's video, we're going to talk about how to plan for your next fall. Yes, now I know that sounds a little bit doomsday, but I think it is a key area for anyone that has any mobility issues or you're of the age where statistically your risk of falling increases and your potential of ending up with a broken bone increases. And that magic number is over the age of 65. So whether you currently have a mobility issue or you're someone that is over the age of 65, placing you at an in increased risk for falling, this video is for you. If you're new to this channel, I'm Tar. I'm a neurologic physical therapist. And on this channel, we talk about anything and everything related to mobility, health, fitness, and mindset in the context of neurologic injury with the end goal of empowering you with as many tools as possible to take ownership of your rehab and your health, to live an overall more active, more mobile, pain-free, happier, healthier life. And all that said, this is actually a real life situation that recently came up with someone that I see in person, but it is pretty common and it's come up in the past. So I thought I'd make an entire video on how to plan for your next potential fall, primarily when going downstairs. Now, the reason I chose this is because it does seem to be a problematic area descending stairs that seems to catch people off guard, like even people that I work with that are super high level and have no history of falls, every once in a while, that type of person will describe a fall when going downstairs that just kind of came out of nowhere. So first I wanna just do a little hypothesizing on why I think someone that's super strong and super high level and has no history of falls just out of the blue would fall when going downstairs, and then go through some exercises and activities that I feel like people should be doing every single day to decrease, if not eliminate your risk of ending up in this situation where you have one of these freak, out of nowhere seemingly falls when going downstairs. So problem solving with a patient recently, why do I think that this can happen for someone who really has no history of falls? Well, if you've had a stroke or a brain injury, my number one thought is that uh, there's when you're regaining movement, you're using a combination of synergy patterns, which I've talked a lot about on this channel, meaning you're using an extensor synergy pattern, which is kind of like an ingrained pattern in our brain that a lot of times we resort to after a brain injury. Now, what I think might happen is that even after you emerge out of this phase where you're using synergy patterns to move, I still think there is a foundational uh, component where that synergy pattern is still kind of there and helping you with normal coordinated movements as you progress through the stages of recovery. So what do I mean? Some of you out there, you use all synergy patterns, meaning the only way you know how to load your weight on a leg is to use what we call these kind of innate patterns that are built into our brain. Done a lot of videos on this, so just go through and search the channel for anything on synergy patterns, okay? So there's a, some of you out there that you use a lot of synergy patterns. If your knee hyperextends, there's the potential that you're probably using a synergy pattern to load that leg or support your body weight on that leg. But then there's some of you that maybe occasionally use a synergy pattern, but for the most part, if you think about bending your knee or moving what I call out of a synergy pattern, you can probably do it. And that would be the case with the person that I saw recently, that this person does have the ability to coordinate movement, meaning he doesn't use all synergy patterns to move. But here's the thing. I think if you've had damage to your brain, that you never really uh, lose the ability to, for your body to want to use that synergy pattern because it is more 
convenient, I guess, for lack of a better word, meaning that you're, you don't have to think about it. So when you go to load your leg, you don't have to think about it. And this would be the case for those of you where you feel like, yeah, I'll be walking fine. And then all of a sudden my knee just starts hyperextending. Usually when you get into a crowded area or maybe where you're on some more difficult terrain, your body, I think, is going to gravitate towards what is reliable. And that synergy pattern is reliable. So now let's bring that to why this could be a potential problem when descending stairs. So if you are someone who is working on descending stairs where you lower your body weight down with your involved leg, which a lot of you are there, which is great. You know how to control or support your body weight as you bend the knee to go downstairs. And maybe you do it all the time, no problem. Why is it then that this is a condition or a situation where a lot of people just have this like fall out of the blue. My theory is, or my hypothesis is, is that in that moment, there's a split second moment in some cases where maybe the step right before you go down the step, you use a synergy pattern unconsciously, not something you think about, unconsciously. And then when your body needs to really have that motor control, meaning that your knee has to be able to bend and unlock and you have to be able to control the muscles around your knee if that previous step was a step where you use this energy pattern or you get distracted or your body feels a little bit stressed or anything like that that next step when you unlock your knee it's all or none meaning that you break that synergy pattern and your body doesn't react fast enough to kind of kick in with all that new great motor control movement that you've been working on for months okay so i know that was a very long answer but the reason i go through that is no one thinks it's going to happen to them and i do think this type of a fall happening is always a potential risk. So what do you do to eliminate that risk? Well, one is, is that you practice descending stairs. If you are someone that goes step over step and you want to lead with your weaker leg, one is, is that you practice that step in some fashion every single day. So whether that's just going to a shopping center and stepping down a step, or building a step that you can have in your home. Why do I think you should practice it every day? One is, is you're gonna develop or maintain the motor control, how to descend a step without using that kind of like all or none, that kind of ingrained system. Two, you will discover the more you do this outside of an actual event where you're trying to get around the community, if you do this outside of that, the more repetitions you get in, the more likely a lot of these error signals are going to happen. So you are going to learn or develop the ability to react in an appropriate manner when that potential problem might occur when you're out in the community. And the only way you can develop that is to get in the numbers. And so before it becomes a problem, I think everyone, even if it's just five times a day, do step downs off of a step. And I've made videos on that. Number two, the thing that I think is very, very important to keep yourself out of the hospital uh, for a potential injury that might occur when this type of fall happens is to practice falling. So some key factors, and I've made videos on this before, and I will link those videos in the description below as to how to fall, is that you want to make sure that you relax into a fall. So our tendency is going to be to stiffen up. Rigid objects are more fragile and they break, right? So you kind of almost want to fall or relax into a fall and try not to stretch out your extremities. The only way that you can do that is to practice it. I recommend if you can just once a month having your family pull your mattress onto the floor and just practice 
falling down onto a mattress. Mattress is nice and soft and you most likely will not hurt yourself. Practice rolling out of a fall. If you're going to fall backwards, protecting your head, uh, those are all things that will help you to minimize your risk of ending up with a serious injury that has you end up in the hospital. And then the third thing, and really is going to be the area that we're going to focus on in this video, is to practice just outside the box movements. Now, why is this important? In most cases, if you do happen to unfortunately fall down a step, you just never know what type of situation you're going to end up in. In the case that I referenced earlier, there was gravel around and really nothing to kind of help push up from. And in that situation, this person did not feel comfortable rolling onto his knees because the the ground, he was worried about getting abrasions on his feet. And so recently we just went through different ways that maybe you can get up without being on your knees. And yeah, it was a little bit awkward, but the main point was, is we just got on the ground and we just rolled around and moved around. Didn't care what it looked like. It didn't have to be pretty. And that's kind of what we're going to go through today is just like different movements that I think everyone could potentially incorporate into their daily routine on the ground, getting up onto the knees, getting up onto your hands and feet. All of those things are what we're going to go through in today's video. Before we dive into the exercises in today's video, there is a handout that goes along with today's video that has pictures of the exercises as well as descriptions of each of the exercises so that you don't need to keep coming back to watch this video to incorporate the specific exercises that will benefit you the most into your home exercise program. That exercise handout is available to our bronze members only. That membership program is just $5 a month. To learn more about becoming a member and to sign up, visit rehab-hq.com. With your membership, not only will you get access to all of the exercise handouts that go along with these YouTube videos, but you will also have access to ad-free versions of these videos as well as access to our Discord channel where you can interact with other members and where I pop in a few times a week to answer your questions. So again, to learn more about that program, visit rehab-hq.com. And now let's go ahead and dive into today's exercises. All right, so we're going to kind of be transitioning between starting high and going low and starting low and going high. I'm going to try and put them in order so that the movement patterns we're going to focus on today go from easier versions to harder versions. But for this exercise, all we're focusing on is learning how to have weight on all four extremities or if you don't have use of one arm, you know, three extremities or showing you a variation of going down onto your elbows and being able to move your feet. The more extremities that you can use when you are down on the ground, the better off you're going to be. So if you can find a way to leverage your body on two arms, that's of course going to be best. But even if you have one arm kind of practicing now in how to get good leverage and being able to support your body weight using all four extremities, remember our end goal for this is really being able to get around on the ground as well as being able to get up after a fall. So again, let me show that to you. Support on your arms. You can do this version or you can put your to go down on your elbows and I just want you to get used to just moving your feet in all directions. All right, so crossing over, walking them forward, walking them back, forward and back. All right, for this next one we're just going to work on going down placing our hands down either on the floor or on a step and then coming back up. That's it. Now, depending on where you're at in the recovery stages or how much ability you have can determine how high the step is. The end goal is that you could put your hands all the way down on the ground 
You're just going to tap them down onto the ground and then come back up. Tap them down and come back up. Then you're going to tap them down. Now you're going to put a little bit of weight onto both hands. If you can't do that, practice learning how to leverage your body weight over one arm. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add a little step out to the side and a little step out to the side and a little bit of a step forward and a little bit of a step forward on the other side and then a step backwards and then step backwards with your other foot. Again, you want you do not want to feel totally comfortable. So within reason and using your judgment, you want to practice kind of pushing yourself outside your comfort zone just a little bit. Here's the thing. When you actually are in the midst of a fall or right after a fall, a fall will just zap you of your energy or adrenaline spikes. You could be angry. You could be upset. There's a lot of reasons why like you might immediately following a fall, not have a ton of energy. So it is good to practice being just outside your comfort zone just a little bit, because I guarantee if you ever end up in a situation, you're definitely going to be outside your comfort zone. So use your judgment, but see if there's a way that you could find a push yourself just a little bit outside your comfort zone. And then again, side to side steps. And then if you are good at that, you'll just go all the way down to the floor and same thing. Back, forward, side, side, maybe even a little bit to the front and to the front. And then, of course, you do need to be able to get your hands on your legs to push yourself back up. All right, now we're going to give our bottom a little bit of support and really work on moving our extremities. Again, trying to keep as many extremities supporting our body weight as possible. So support your bottom for this one. Go ahead and sit down on a step. If you know you can't get up from a step, that is definitely another great exercise that I do think everyone should be working towards is being able to go in from like a low squatting position into standing. I've talked about this in other videos, but of course, I always, I think part of just aging well, people should, or it, is, it would be a good idea for people to practice sit to stands from a low surface every single day. The number one reason people start losing their mobility and eventually ending up with disability as we age is when you can't get up out of a chair. It really will take your independence away. So if you practice every day, standing up from a low surface, you'll never lose the ability to knock it out of a chair. So I've talked about that in other videos. I did a video on just aging in general and some exercises that I think are beneficial to do every single day. And one of the videos, one of the exercises in that video was squatting to standing every single day. But now let's get back to this video and just working on outside the box movements that I really do think are a good idea for people to work on every single day. And so for this one, we're gonna put your hands off to one side and you're just gonna step one foot out to the side. All right, now, this is gonna be a quite a stretch for a lot of you, meaning that your, mobile, your joints just might not feel totally comfortable like getting into some of these positions, but if you've never had a joint replacement and you haven't had any back surgery, definitely, you know, it, it's kind of a good stretch. I would say if you've had surgery, it doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means that you should probably work with a physical therapist to make sure you're doing movements that are safe, especially if you have hardware, total hip replacement, total knee replacement, or any type of a back surgery, probably just better off to work with a physical therapist to see what which of these movements you can push a little bit and which ones you should probably not do. Um, but then we're going to go off to the other side. And then just step that foot out to the side. Try and get weight on both hands if you can. All right. Back over to the other side. Step that foot out to the side. And again, back up. Now, how do I know that these things are a good idea to work on? Well, because when I ask people to do some leg movements in positions they're not used to exercising in, 
there it, it's hard if you don't practice moving a leg especially with hemiparesis outside of like a traditional exercise that maybe you're currently doing when you get in that situation your brain just might not know how to move that limb so we are trying to get in some little bit of an awkward position and see if you can still move those legs definitely you're not going to know unless you try so practice these every day all right and then we're going to put your hands down in front and try just try shifting your weight moving the foot out to the side same thing with the other side moving that foot out to the side believe it or not it's very very hard to pick your legs up when you're in this crunched over position you're kind of what we call at end range of the joint and it makes it sometimes feel like near impossible to work on but if you do it enough, you will get it. If you can't, um, you know, just put like a furniture slider under your foot and just do foot slides. And same thing going forward. Out, forward, out. Now, if you can't do that and your leg just will not move, just start by just putting your hands on the step behind you and doing it that way. Forward, forward. That's going to be plenty hard for a lot of you as well. And so that's a good introductory type of movement to get to the point where you could do it in this very, very crunched position. All right, and then next we're gonna kind of turn sideways on the step. And I just want you to put your hands down. You can just bend over and just kind of rest on your front leg, but arms down on the ground. And then just try and step that foot back and then step it forward. Try and keep both hands on the ground if you can. If you can't, maybe put one hand down on the step or put your hands on your knee. But you just want to be in this very crunched position and trying to figure out a way to move your feet. All right, so if you need to lean to the side, if you lean away a little bit, that might make it a little bit easier to step that foot back. And then same thing on the other side. Down, hands on the ground, step the foot back. or hand up on the step, try and step that foot back. All right, now this one's gonna be a little bit more advanced. And for this one, we're gonna go and bend to one side. Your legs don't have to be perfect. This leg doesn't have to be straight or anything, but you wanna kind of shift all your body weight to one leg. And then if you can, walk your hands over to the other leg and kind of push this leg straight. So walk those hands over, straight, walk them back, and straight. And then from there, we're just gonna turn. You don't have to be super low, and I really want you, some of you to work on, if you can, not letting your knee touch the ground, and you're just gonna bring one arm up and back down. So you're gonna bring the arm up and back down. Again, just playing around with how to leverage your body weight in these awkward positions without falling. And then same thing on the other side, leverage your body weight up and back down, and then see if you can come back to the middle. Arm up, arm up, and push all the way up. All right, now, this video would not be complete if we didn't go over a couple of ways to prevent yourself from getting ending up down on the ground in the first place. And that's just working on stepping down with some variations that'll kind of help to challenge you just outside of our traditional step downs that I've shown in a lot of other videos. And that's adding some other task to the activity. Again, kind of trying to simulate what it's actually like in the real world where you have distractions and your attention isn't always 100% focused on the step down. So we're just gonna use this. This is a medicine ball. So it is a weighted ball. But if you, this is your, and this is very high level. So I would not do these exercises unless you've gone through all the other videos that I have on step downs and you know you can step down without adding an additional task. But we're gonna toss it up, step down, and catch it. Okay? So you're gonna toss it up, step down, and catch it. Again, toss it up, step down, and catch. 
Now remember, if you use a lot of spastis or you have a lot of knee hyperextension, which means that you probably do use a lot of spasticity, be very careful when you do this because when you have spasticity, it's all or none. Either the muscle is in a spastic pattern or the groups of muscles are in a spastic pattern or they're not. And that's when you get that like seemingly out of nowhere knee buckles and you fall. So definitely do this first without anything. And then if you get good at that, add kind of a dual task, but the weight of the ball also adds a little bit of a, like a kind of a perturbance, per perturbance, which makes it a little bit harder as well. And catching down. And catching down. And catching down. All right. So I know we did a lot of crazy movements of getting our hands and all four extremities on the ground, but I had mentioned at the beginning of this video that the inspiration behind this video was an actual patient where they were in a situation where they couldn't get on their knees. So, and this is pretty common. There could be gravel or maybe you scraped up your knees. And you don't want to like rub that dirt into your knees. So, there are alternatives. They're not the easiest way to get up off of the ground, but I think they're worth going over for those of you that maybe are a little bit higher level, just to give you some idea or a vision in your head of potential other ways that you can get off the ground. And one is kind of doing the traditional method that I've shown a lot, and that's rolling over right? And normally at this point, what I've shown in other videos is that you get up on your knees. But if you can, maybe get up without your knees touching. See, this is where all those weird movements kind of come into play. And then step one foot forward, push your body weight back, and come up. Now, is this easy? No. And that's what we discovered when I was practicing this with someone recently. But what we did discover is that getting into this position isn't that difficult without your knees touching, and that maybe by practicing this, even if your knee touches, there's not as much weight on it, okay? And then you can push up and stand up. That's why I think it's so valuable to work on these things, even if they seem difficult. So hands down, get that knee so that it's hovering, but maybe not touching the ground, step this foot back and back down. And then same thing, push up, knees hovering, step forward, push your weight back, arm up, and arm up. And then I will just give one other suggestion. If there's no possible way you can get up without putting your knees down on the ground, I do recommend that you put your uninvolved knee down first. One is because you have more sensation in that knee, so you're going to be able to kind of feel where the ground a little bit and maybe find an area of the ground that isn't as uh, uneven or maybe jagged. But the other reason is, is that you have more control in this leg. So when you actually get on that knee, there's not going to be as much shifting around to get that knee in the perfect place. So your uninvolved knee, if you end up in a situation where you're worried about scraping your knees up, I would put the uninvolved knee down. So you can see that's also good because this is my stronger arm. So I can use that arm to push up. Get this knee down because you're going to be much more accurate in where you put that knee. And then you can bring this leg forward, which for a lot of people bringing the uninvolved leg or the involved leg forward is easier. Tuck that back toe under, push up, and come up and then step forward and up. And that is it for this video. I hope you guys found this video helpful, a little bit outside the box, but it is never a bad time to start planning for the unexpected. So hopefully you got something out of this video that you'll be able to use. Don't forget that if you want access to the handout that goes along with this video, 
and you want to be able to have the ad-free version of this video, visit rehab-hq.com and you can sign up for our bronze membership. That's a $5 membership. With that $5 membership, you will get access to the handouts that supplement these videos here on YouTube, as well as the ad-free version of the video, as well as access to our Discord channel where you can submit questions throughout the week and I pop in there a few times and answer questions over there as well as being able to interact with other members. If you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed and you like this kind of video, hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so that you will get notified every time I upload new videos. If you wanted to go a little bit deeper and really take ownership of your rehab program, I highly recommend that you join our gold monthly membership program. With your gold membership, you will get access to an entire vault of over 400 exercises where you can search by body part, movement problem, stretches, strengthening, standing balance control. It's a lot easier to filter through some of the exercises as well as the exercises are in very short clips so you don't have to watch an entire video that you might find here on, on YouTube. You can get to the exact exercises that will get you to the next level in your rehab. To learn more about that gold monthly membership program, visit rehab-hq.com. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.